coming. We'll get started. This is Victoria. She's helping me. Wonderful person and a very good interpreter. The subject, how to use books to discuss difficult topics with children. Ah, okay. I see. In what difficult personal and social topics are children interested? We have all teachers in this room. So please raise your hand. Some topics that are out of curriculum. And these topics come up suddenly and in a not convenient time. So please, someone raise your hand. What is the subject? One topic, please. Drugs. What grade do you teach? Sex, of course. What grade do you teach? Ninth grade. Ninth grade, yes. Of course, that question comes up earlier, too. Uh, I have a friend who's an author. She wrote a book. Don't touch my private parts. Which is an illustrated children's book. What other uh, topics, please? Survival. What kind of survival? Uh, food survival? Uh, so unusual, different topics like Robinson Crusoe, but modernized uh, Robinson, which is coming to the virtual oh, They have fears maybe about a disaster. Catastrophe. <laughs> We, we have war, and this is their children from the I see war, and war very close to us here <laughs> in Hakkis. Yes, I, I understand war. One of my books is called What is Peace? And people ask me, why don't you write a book called What is War? I'm more interested to find out what is peace and Але to мені... talk about peace. But, but of course, in that book, we have pictures of war also. I asked about food survival. Food survival. Because in the United States, we have children coming to school without breakfast. So in, in the United States, we have children who have one meal a day, which is a lunch meal in the school cafeteria. What are the topics, please? Yeah. And what? Elderly age and death. Aging, getting older. I have that problem too. <laughs> please. Uh, what are the subject, please? Topic. Uh, gender. Gender identification. This is very important because some of the children are coming out lesbian, homosexual, transgender, and they're coming out early now. And so these kinds of questions 
Yes, please. Oh, hidden aggression. Aggression, anger, and also opposite of anger, depression. With more and more children depressed in the United States, taking drugs, antidepressant drugs, which lead to suicide, which lead to violence, side effects of the drugs. Yes. Uh, it's very important to me this what are the difficult subjects because traditionally these difficult topics were discussed at home. And now both parents are working. I have a friend, she's an attorney. And after one year she got bored. She had a baby, after one year she got bored. And went back to work. So now the nanny from Mexico is raising the child. Basically. So these difficult topics that we're talking about were talked about in the home with the mother and the father, the grandmother, the grandfather, the uncle, the aunt. But now it's come to us as teachers, as educators. These they're coming to school with some problem, like we said, divorce. Domestic, domestic violence. Uh, these kinds of problems. And now we're supposed to help the children. Yes? Because originally we were to teach academics. So we heard one statistic this morning here in Ukraine, 7% of teachers are satisfied with the textbooks. So one of the ways that we can start to discuss difficult topics with children is by using better books. So we say use books as a guide to start talking about the subjects that are not being discussed at home, but now we have to discuss them. Here's some of the topics. Friendship, early socialization, we call it. The children coming to school, trying to make friends, age pre-K, K. You can't come to my party. You can't have any of my treat. That's what we hear, right? In the early grades. So, friendship. Or then it becomes what we call cliques or groups. And you can't come into my group. You're not cool enough. Bullying, feelings. And now the U.S. Congress is passing laws about anti-bullying laws. Feelings. How do we express our feelings in a way that doesn't hurt others? It doesn't hurt us. And if we don't express our feelings in a sensitive way, then it comes out in what we call compensatory behavior. 
І якщо ми не будемо бережати емоції і будемо тримати їх собі, то це вийдеться компенсаторного поведінку. So where did the child learn bullying? Where did the child learn to bully? Звідки дитина, де вона навчилася ображати інших, бути цим були? The child learned to bully at home. Дитина навчилася вдома. So they come, they're being bullied, they're being aggressive. Тобто їх ображають вдома, на них стікається агресія. So they're expressing their fear, their anger on somebody else. І вони виливають свій страх та агресію на когось іншого. We talk about family. Ми говоримо про родину. Family is the first social unit. Родина – це перша соціальна ланка. Some writers I read, I wrote one book called What is a Family? Я написав одну книжку, яка називається «Що таке родина?». And I do research on these books, so it's not just my opinion. І перед тим, як писати книжку, я проводжу дослідування. Тобто це не лише моя суб'єктивна думка. And I read a French political writer about the family. І я прочитав, що говорить французький політик щодо родини. And this writer is saying, the family is the birthplace of fascism. І він сказав, що родина – це місце знародження фашизму. It's a very radical view. Дуже радикальне бачення. But if you think about it, the child has to obey the authority of somebody bigger and stronger and maybe doesn't respect that person. Але якщо задуматися, немовляв, воно відчуває авторитет когось більшого та сильнішого за себе, але, можливо, ця людина їй зовсім не подобається. Я не говорю, що я не стверджую, що родина – це місце фашизму, але таку динаміку також варто враховувати. Ми говоримо про приватні частини, не дотикайте мої приватні частини. Ми говоримо про ці родинні частини, не чіпайте мене. Teaching girls and boys. No. Can you say no? Вы можете сказать не. Please say no now. Будь ласка, скажите не. Learn to say no. Начать сказать не. Okay, there are books written now teaching that to children. А есть специальные книжки, которые начинают детей этому. Death. Смерть. Well, when I spoke this morning, how many people were here? А коли я коли я робив промову ганці, скільки людей тут було? Підніть вас руки. Okay, I had a cultural moment. Я був момент культурної, скажімо так, культурного невеличкого і відмінності. Because if you remember, I told the story of the medical doctor, the woman medical doctor, who sent her boy, ten years old. To my stand at a book fair. Якщо ви пам'ятаєте, розповідав історію про жінку лікаря, яка син якої підійшов до моєї до моєї книжкової виставки. And the ten-year-old boy was bored. Йому було нудно. So I said, "Come on, read a book. Just take any book you want." Почитай книжку, візьми будь-яку, яка тобі подобається. So he took my book, "What is Death." І він взяв мою книжку, що таке смерть. Now, what is death is my second most popular book. I have 15 books that I wrote in the What Is series. I have written 15 books, but the book about death is the second most popular book in the whole world. And my books are translated into 16 languages. My books are translated into 16 languages. What is death is my second most popular book. So he read it. He put it down. І він прочитав її від хвалу. And his mother came over. Потім підійшла його мама. And she's a medical doctor. І вона лікар. A woman of science. Науковець. And she said, okay, honey, take a book, whichever book you want. Добре, сонечко, вибирай книжку, яка тобі подобається. So he picks up what is death. І він вибрав, що таке смерть. And she takes it, she puts it down. І вона забрала його в неї і поклала назад. And she says to him, we know what happens when you die. Вона сказала, ми знаємо, що відбувається, коли ти помираєш. You meet Jesus and you go to heaven. Pick another book. Ти зустрічаєшся з Ісусом і йдеш на небо. Вибери другу іншу книжку. Now when I told that story this morning, it was complete silence. Коли я розповів цю історію сьогодні вранці, була повна тиша. When I tell that story in the United States, people laugh. Коли я розповідаю цю історію в Сполучених Штатах, люди сміються. So these are cultural differences that we have. Це є культурна відмінність між нами. But we're still going to have to talk about this topic. Але все одно нам необхідно про це говорити. However you talk about it, or however we talk about it. 
universal concern of children. Death. What happens if you die, mommy? Where do I go when I die, mommy? Where did grandpa go when he died? Children want to know. So these are some of the other uh, food, love, dreams, nightmares. I wrote a book called What is Dreaming? And this is not a, a, a book about dreaming what you want to be when you grow up, your aspiration of dreaming. It's not that. Right? Can you say? Go ahead. Ah, okay. So it's a book about nighttime dreaming. And sometimes children have nightmares. Who has nightmares here, please? Raise your hands. Please raise your hand. I have nightmares. We have nightmares. So the child has a nightmare. What is the mother supposed to say? Well, they say the Ukrainian mother says the same thing as the American mother. Oh, honey, it's just a nightmare. Don't worry. Take a drink of water. Go out to sleep. Right? Ukrainian mothers say the same. Ukrainian mothers say the same. So, what shall we do if mommy has nightmares? We have to get mommy to the psychologist. Mommy has sleep with the psychologist. And then mommy can help the child. Mama сможет допомогти дитині. See, we have an expression, maybe in Ukraine we have a similar expression. The fruit does not fall far from the tree. And what the mother has, the nightmares that the mother has, are passed down to the child. And the research is showing that the information that the mother has experienced is going into the fetus. So whatever fears the mother has, whatever anger the mother has, whatever depression the mother has, no, it's passed into the into the embryo, into the fetus. So where do nightmares come from? Why can't we talk about that? Uh, health problems in U.S. We have obesity problems here. One out of three children now is overweight. Means overweight means 30 pounds over the normal weight. Є дуже велика проблема зі здоров'ям, зокрема ожиріння, тому що кожна третя дитина в Сполучених Штатах страдає ожирінням. And one out of four children is obese, which means more than 30 pounds over normal. І кожна четверта дитина, якщо кожна третя дитина має певну перевагу понад нормою, то кожна четверта дитина має величезну перевагу понад нормою. So what kind of nutrition are we giving to the children? What are they drinking? What are they eating? One of my books is What is Health? Self-esteem, fairness. Okay, let's go on. Why? Why are children interested in these difficult personal and social problems, uh, topics? Well, because they're experiencing them already in the school society, their mm -hmm. own society. Why children want to know? They are curious. They are afraid. They get conflicting information. They are not fully in the adult world. 
Діти завжди шукають нову інформацію, або діти налякані, або вони отримують інформацію, яка суперечить одна одній, і також вони ще не повністю ніч не дорослого суспільства. And you know, I want to say, I think I'm still a child, and maybe you think that you're still a child sometimes. Знаєте, я чесно кажучи, думаю, що я досі дитина, і мені здається, що кожен дзвонок інколи ще думає, що він дитина. Sometimes we're curious, sometimes we're afraid, sometimes we get conflicting information, and sometimes we don't want to be in the adult world. Інколи ми проходимо через ті самі стадії, ми хочемо дізнатися щось нове, ми передякані, Інформація, яка не є однорідною, або ми просто не хочемо бути частиною дорослого світу. But as adults, we learn what is called coping mechanism. Coping mechanism. Але як дорослі, ми ми навчилися захисним механізмам. We are learning to cope, which means to adjust, to change. Пристосовуватися, змінюватися, захищатися. But most of the children have not learned coping mechanism. Але у дітей ще цих механізмів немає. Oh, sorry. Why do we want to help children to know more about difficult personal social subjects, topics? Чому ж ми хочемо навчити дітей про ці складні теми? Well, number one, I hope we love our children. І причина номер один, сподіваюся, для всіх, ми любимо наших дітей. To help build good character. Для того, щоб допомогти створити гарну особистість. To help the child relieve emotional or physical problems. Для того, щоб допомогти дитині позбавитися емоційних або фізичних проблем. To help the child develop good communication tools. Навчити дитині спілкуватися. To discuss a problem more freely. Вільно говорити про проблеми. To increase a child's understanding of Human social behavior and motivation. Для того, щоб пояснити дитині людську природу та мотивацію. To encourage a child's holistic and positive self-appraisal. А для того, щоб дитина сприймала себе чесно та цілісно. To show a child, a child that he or she is not the first or only person to encounter such a problem. Для того, щоб показати дитині, що він або вона не є першими, хто зіткнувся з такою проблемою. To help a child plan a constructive course of action to solve a problem, and that there is more than one way to solve the problem. Для того, щоб допомогти дитині подумати над проблемою конструктивно та скласти та вирішити які шляхи вирішення запитання, і інколи це більш ніж один варіант. To show how and encourage a child to start using their own critical thinking and emotional intelligence. To start solving problems of their own. Для того, щоб показати дитині, як застосовувати критичне мислення та емоційний інтелект для того, щоб розбиратися зі своїми проблемами самостійно. And this last one, to start using critical thinking and emotional intelligence, is the reason why I write the books that I write. І останній пункт є причиною, чому я пишу книжки. We want to empower the students. We want to empower the children to think it themselves. To be intelligent themselves. Ми хочемо навчити дітей дати їм цю руку, цю зброю, бути розумними і думати за себе. I think you have this expression also in Ukraine, right? Critical thinking skills. Я думаю, в українській мові є також вираз навички критичного мислення. And emotional intelligence. Та емоційний інтелект. You have this expression, right? So, I mean, emotional intelligence. There was a book written. By Mr. Grofeld, I believe, American author. And what is emotional? You read the whole book. What is emotional intelligence in one word? Є книжка, яка написана американським автором про емоційний інтелект. І після прочитання цієї книжки, що ж таке емоційний інтелект? Одним словом. Anybody want to guess? Чи хтось хоче висловити свої думки? One word answer. What is emotional intelligence? Що таке емоційний інтелект? Відповідь в одному слові. Anybody? Reflection. Reflection. Somebody said it here. What did you say, please? Please say empathy. Empathy. You read the book. Yes, I read the book. It comes down to one word, empathy. 
If we can teach ourselves empathy, then we can teach the children empathy. Where can a child best learn about these difficult topics? Home, stable, and safe environment. Good nutrition, good sleep conditions. Good personal, ethical, and social foundation. Parents who have good communication skills. And uh, this is one of the diff most difficult things. In our country, 50% of marriages end up in divorce. Це одна з найбільших проблем в Сполучених Штатах, те, що 50 відсотків шлюбів закінчується розлученням. And in our country, what is the number one reason for divorce? І яка перша причина для розлучення? Yes. Спробуйте вгадати. Please say it. What is it? Lack of empathy. Yes, yes. But officially, what the Social scientists say that the number one cause of divorce. That's not what the social scientists say. The number one. No, no emotional attachment. I think you're all right. What I read. I think you're all right. Uh, what I read, the number one reason, finances. But underneath that is the problem of communication between men and women. I don't know if any of you women have experienced this problem. Yeah. So my wife is a communications expert. She's teaching me to communicate. Моя дружина експерт комунікації, вона вчить мене як спілкуватися. Androgynous semantic realignment. Androgynous. You know the word androgynous? Androgynous is how would we define androgynous? The balance between masculine and feminine. Someone who's androgynous has a balance. <coughs> Thinking and feeling are balanced. Yeah. And uh, semantic. Semantica. Realignment. You know? Can you realignment, same word? So we men and women have to learn how to speak to each other in a way that's balanced. Women talking from their feeling center, men talking from their intellectual center. And how do we find that balance? And maybe it's more of a man's problem. She's going to know. It's an equal problem. But communication skills, of course. Parents have good communication skills. Parents and elders who are good role models. And when I grew up, I didn't have uh, very many role models. Please, who had a good role model? Can you say, I had one good role model? Just raise your hand. About half the people had, could say, I had a really great role model. So, oops, sorry. So the question is, where can a child best learn about these difficult topics? But what we said was, at home, it's become too difficult. Both parents are working. Uh, they're coming and going. They don't eat together anymore. 
in the United States. Отже, де дитина може навчитися дізнатися про цю тему? По-перше, ми говоримо вдома, але ми вже згадували, що батьки працюють, і дитина просто не має шансу отримати цю інформацію. Where can they best learn about these difficult subjects? School, stable, safe environment, rules that are fair and make sense. Номер місце номер два це школа. Це також стабільне середовище для дитини, також безпечне і яке підпорядковується чітким правилам. Good ethical and social academic school principles. Також принципи етичні та соціальні, які панують в школі. Now in English we have principles both ways, you know. Okay. Good leadership. That means the principal and the administrators are good leaders. Лідери, які вони бачать в обличчі шкільної адміністрації. Well-trained teachers in academics and early childhood training. Вчителі з достойним рівнем освіти та професіоналізму. Principal, administration and teachers with good communication skills. Адміністрація школи та вчителі з гарними комунікативними навичками. Principal, administration, teachers who are good role models. І ці самі люди, які є хорошими ролевими моделями. And I'm sure, uh, as Mr. Yakov was saying, we went to school and we really did not get inspired by our teachers. And so maybe one of the reasons that I did badly in math was my math teacher was so boring. Можливо, одна з причин, чому у мене такі погані результати були в математиці, тому що вчитель був нудним. So you can make mathematics fun. You can make it inspiring. Ви можете зробити математику веселою, And calculus too. Calculus. And I mentioned this morning we have teachers now, as I said, we have obesity problem. І як я вже згадував, у нас є проблема з зайвою We have teachers that are sitting in their chair the whole time during class and they don't even get up. Ми маємо вчителів, які сидять весь рок за своїм столом і навіть не встають. So the children are just, you know, how do you, the child, what kind of leader is this, what kind of role model? Який же це лідер, яка це ролева модель для дитини? So I just want to say about this. Please, if you're available uh, on Wednesday, I'm doing a three-hour workshop uh, here at 10 o'clock. It's called Happy Teacher, Happy Students. І також, якщо ви плануєте відвідати конференцію середу, у нас буде секція о 10-й годині, яка називається «Щасливі вчити, щасливі учні». So we want to look at ourselves as role models, as leaders. І ми поглянемо на себе як родові моделі та лідери. Where can child best learn about these difficult topics? National and global society. Stable, safe environment created and maintained by responsible government and international organizations. Місце номер три, де дитина може дізнатися про ці теми, це є національне та глобальне суспільство, яке також є стабільним та безпечним і управляється урядом та міжнародними організаціями. Good ethical, social, academic and universal principles яке керується універсальними принципами, також принципами етики, соціальної та економічної поведінки. Good leadership, local, national, professional, in all fields. Сильні лідери в усіх сферах. Open, national and international communications. Відкрита можливість комунікації, як всередині країни, так і між країнами. Universal concerns for children, elderly, oppressed, poor and sick people, and the environment. Універсальна турбота про меншини, людей, яких ображають бідних, хворих, і також про однокожність. And I must tell you that I did not vote for Donald Trump. Я можу вам сказати, я не голосував за Дональда Трампа. But since Mr. Trump is now president, we have seen a rise in the schools of hate, bigotry, and prejudice. And this is documented. Mr. Plato, remember our Greek 
philosopher Mr. Plato. Platón, grecký filozof. He said, the state is made by the man, the man is made by the state. A він казав, бо дитина створює державу, держава створює дитину. So we have created a Donald Trump. Ми створили Дональда Трампа. And now Donald Trump is creating small Donald Trumps. А тепер же Дональд Трамп створює свій маленький Дональд. So what are we to do? You know, if we get, if we get in the U.S., we ask ourselves, the election was Tuesday night. А коли ми були в коли ми були в Сполучених Штатах, а вибори були у Tuesday night, November. У листопаді вночі у вівторок. Wednesday night we went to church. А вночі в середу ми пішли до церкви. And in our church, the pastor does speak about political matters. А і вночі в середу у пастора почав говорити про політику. Because we were concerned. What are we going to do now? This crazy man is now the president. Тому що ми були схвильовані, що нам тепер робити? Цей ж нарізаний чоловік тепер наш президент. Our pastor said, whatever happens outside, our job has not changed. Пастор сказав, що неважливо, що трапляється в навколишньому світі, наша робота не змінюється. So if Hillary Clinton is elected, or if Donald Trump is elected, my job is the same. Неважливо, кого вибрали, Дональд Трамп чи Хіллер Клінтон, моя робота залишається такою самою. Але були люди, які панікували. Я маю друзі, психологи, і вони були дуже насичені робочі праці. А вони не знали, що робити, як справитися зі своїми відчуттями. So my pastor said, look, you know these guys who are the ambulance guys. We call them emergency medical response. А він мій пастор сказав, а ти знаєш цих хлопців зі швидкої допомоги? You see these guys when you call them, they, at least in the US, when they come, they're very professional, they don't make a lot of noise. Your mother had a heart attack. She's laying on the floor. So they just go, three guys, they're very quiet, they do their job. No panic. No panic. That's what my pastor was saying. You do your job, you're professional, do your job. So we're saying how important Yes, are our leaders who we elect. So, why use books to discuss difficult topics with children? Books are third-party agencies that imply neutral authority, not parents, not teachers, etc. Чому використовувати книжки для розмов про ці складні теми? Тому що книжка є так званою третєю стороною, яка є нейтральною, вона не займає не позицію вчителя, не позицію батьків. Especially when you're getting into the teenage years, high school, middle school, children are very, students are very rebellious. Коли діти стають дуже бунтарними. They don't want to know what the adult says, the teacher, the parent. Їм начхати, що говорять батьки або вчителі. I was that way. Я був такий. I knew everything. Don't talk to me. You're old. Моя реакція була, не говори зі мною, ти старий. So, when we say third party neutral, okay, it's not what I say, your mother or your father, it's not what the teacher says, let's see what this book says. Коли ми говоримо про нейтралітет, тобто це не моя думка, це не думка вчителя, подивись просто, що написано в книжці. Now, a very smart student says, I don't care what the book says either. Дуже розумні учні кажуть, та він чхав, я те, що написано в цій книжці також. So, books on a difficult topic can explore the subject more deeply than an ordinary person. So, of course, you know, when I write a book like, what is a dream, or what is a family, 
I spent three or four months, I do a lot of research, so my book has a lot of information. So you're using a book to help you discuss a difficult subject that maybe you didn't think everything about. Тому, починаючи розмову з дитиною, книжці, ти можеш знайти набагато більше інформації, ніж ти міг собі уявити. Books stimulate the imagination of a child through text and illustration. Книжки стимулюють дитячу уяву з допомогою тексту та ілюстрації. Books can be studied over and over again to get a better understanding of the topic. І книжки можна перечитувати для того, щоб просто зрозуміти тему краще. Books become personal treasures. І книжки стають особистими скарбами. Now notice I didn't write e-books. Children, let me put this, uh, what we have an expression now called e-book hypocrites. Hypocrite is a person who says one thing and does another thing. Hypocrite, right? They call e-book hypocrites because the parents are reading their books on the tablet. You say, parents are reading their books on the tablet. But for the children, they're still buying the books. So just in the physical form, there's a value to these books. So the first part, now we come to what we call the meat and the potatoes of the talk. Number one, select the correct reading material. That means age appropriate and relevant to the child's special experience. So if the student is asked or the child is asking about death, we have to look for a book that relates about that subject for that age. The book is well written, meaningfully illustrated. It's recommended reading by a librarian, other teacher, parent, or even child. So when I'm at a book fair selling my books, the mother, which is 98% of the time, it's the woman who is buying the books from me at the book fair. 98% of the time is the mother or the woman who is buying the books for the child. And if I see a father or a man buying a book, I shake his hand, I say, congratulations, sir. Thank you so much for buying a book and being involved in your child's education. І коли я бачу або зустрічаю чоловіка, який купує книжку своїй дитині, я пожимаю йому руку і кажу, молодець, дякую, так тримати. І запитання, чи так само це відбувається в нашій країні? Чи так відбувається, що жінки в основному зайняті освітою дитини? I'm sorry, we have to get faster. Okay, so... Ah, uh, during the reading, ask the five W's and any part of the story, ask, be sure the child is attentive and understanding text illustration. Where is this story happening? Who are the main characters in the story? When is the story happening? What is 
happening in the story? Why is this happening? Because a lot of times the children they're saying yes, yes. Uh -huh. But they're not really understanding. So you have to really involve the child by asking more and more questions. Why? Why is the wolf? Why is the wolf blowing down the house? Why does the wolf chase the piggies? И чому Бог женеться за поросян? Чому він хоче зруйнувати його солодку людиночку? Does anybody know the answer? Хто знає відповідь? Nobody knows. Чому Бог женеться за поросян? Хоче зруйнувати людиночку? He wants to eat the piggies. Yeah. That's obvious to us. But maybe the child doesn't understand why the wolf. Але може ви це якось не розумієте? Чому Бог женеться за поросян? So, just two more minutes. Identification. Encourage the child to identify her or himself as the character in the story, experiencing events in the story. Did you ever meet somebody like that? Самоідентифікація, тобто дитину треба заохотити і ідентифікувати саме себе в цій історії, щоб за допомогою цієї інформації вже доросла людина могла побачити, яка в тебе є проблема. Did that ever happen to you? Це коли з тобою траплялося? Encourage a child to give example of similar experience or one that he has heard of. Заохотити дитину розповісти, чи колись він проживав таке, чи можливо бачив. Or if the above doesn't work, then ask, what if that happened to you? What would you do? Або якщо перші два рецепти не спрацювали, спробували спробувати третій. А що ти будеш робити, якщо це станеться з тобою? So we are encouraging imagination. Almost last slide. Отже, ми застосовуємо уяву. Майже останній слайд. Okay. Catharsis, the Greek word. Living through the experience of a character in the story and getting relief at the end of the story. Following the book reading, start a discussion about the book. The child is encouraged to express an emotional or intellectual reaction to the reading. Дитина має бути заохочена висловлювати свої емоції та бачення під час читання. Які ми можемо задати запитання? Тобі сподобалась історія? Що тобі сподобалось найбільше? А що тобі сподобалось найменше? Звертайте увагу на ці частини, де може вмиститися до тема, яка є болючою, або страшною для дитини. Як ти відчував, як ти себе почував, коли вовк зруйнував солов'яний будиночок про все? Пов'язуйте книгу з щоденним досвідом дитини. The wolf is like a bully, right? Вовк – це наче той хуліган зі школи, чи не так? What do we do if somebody tries to bully us? А що робити, якщо хтось почне нас задирати? Last part. Self-expression allows the child to reenact the story they just read in their own way. Самовираження задає можливість дитині інтерпретувати історію зі своєї точки зору. This is done either by the child alone or in a group. In this way, the child organically demonstrates comprehension and emotional release. Це може бути відбувати. Це може відбуватися індивідуально або в групі, і таким чином дитина продемонструє свої відчуття або полегшення. Can you show any parts of the story in your own way? А можеш? А як? Можеш мені показати частину цієї історії? So for a young girl, maybe you give her a drum. What did you feel? When the wolf was chasing the pig. I should have been up for the wolf with the wolf as the that's what I said. So maybe she's beating real hard. This is what I felt when the wolf was chasing. Можливо, вона буде, можливо, вона просто буде бити дуже дуже сильно, щоб показати, як було зі серцем. Okay, final advice. Just to review, please review the methods we discussed. 
If there is a topic in your classroom that should be addressed, bullying, death in a family, friendship, etc., choose a good book to read with the students. Compile a book list that addresses difficult topics and share with colleagues. Don't be afraid to personally face some of these difficult topics yourself. A good children's book can help adults too. Thank you very much. Thank you.